One of the most important reasons to get to develop skill in graphs and tables is that there are many ways to present data that are very excellent. There are many ways to present data that are designed to mislead you. And if you're going to be an, an informed citizen, a participating member of society, you need to think for yourself. You need to consider good information. And then, on that basis, you need to decide what you believe. Never take somebody's word for something. Make sure that you think for yourself. You are entitled to your own opinion, and I will defend that to the death. However, you're not entitled to your own set of facts. So that's going to be a big point of this course. Okay. One way to represent categorical data is through a bar graph. You must have a title. You must have the name of the variable, the categories, frequency. Notice on the y-axis they are giving us frequency. That's a representation of counts. How many? They are distinct gaps between the categories because there's no overlap. You know, there's no such thing as a burger taco. Well, there might be, but for the purposes of this exercise, uh, no. Okay, Mr. Matthews takes a survey of his third period class, and he does tallies. He's going to use a bar graph. Bar graphs include a title. The responses are the categories. Now, if an individual can respond in more than one category, if you're presenting the data, don't use a bar graph. Use a table. Categories may be displayed in any order. They could be done alphabetically. They could be done geographically. They could be done any way you like. If they go from biggest to smallest, that's a Pareto chart. If your categories are allowed to overlap, lots of people do it. Sometimes it's appropriate. Usually there's a better way to present your data. Then your percentages might add to more than 100%. If the your bars for your graph could be either horizontal or vertical, and then obviously the axes would flip as well. Frequency tables, one of my favorite things. A frequency table gives you a count of how many responses you get for each category. Okay, fine. Okay, how many students did Ms. Sorensen survey? We have no idea. And the reason we have no idea is it doesn't tell us whether people could vote for more than one category. Pie charts you've seen since you were um, at least in middle school, maybe earlier. Sometimes circle graphs can be an excellent representation of data. There are some important ideas to keep in mind. They cannot overlap. Everyone must choose exactly one category. The relative frequencies have to add up to 100%. You can either use actual, by actual they mean counts, relative they mean percentage or rates to determine the size of each fraction in the circle. You may either label the slides or use colors and a legend, and it depends 
how many different categories you have, which is going to be most effective. One, two things to keep in mind are, first of all, everything has to add up to 100%. Second of all, the angles must be appropriate. Now let's create a circle graph. How many pets do you own? Well, none. You will note the responses are the count, the percentages are the rate. Counts versus rates. Sometimes one is important, sometimes the other is important. The murder rate in New Braunfels, Texas doubled last year. That sounds really bad. It doubled? Ugh, crime must be running rampant. Two years ago, they had one murder. Last year, they had two. The rate doubled. The number of murders? Pretty insignificant per 100,000 population. Things to keep in mind. Okay, we have to have a title for our graph, number of pets. Let's divide up our pie. We want the angles to represent the fraction of the whole that we had. Relative frequency, this is the same exact data, except we are, ex we are demonstrating these data as frequency or percentage. The counts are the same, the representations are different. The only thing that's different is the Y value. Now, a second reason to get really good at charts and scales is that the ACT science section is nothing except charts, scales, and graphs. So if you can do a good job with this, your science score on the ACT will be much improved. Okay, in making conclusions from these data, you're expected to describe what you see. You're expected to be able to compare different categories. 3D came about in the early days of graphics software, and everybody got so excited because they could make the computer draw 3D stuff. Well, yeah. The problem with that is that almost always they're really misleading. So, they distort the value of the data. Pictures should be proportional. One way that people who want to mislead you will, um, will do so pretty easily is by playing with the y-axis. The y-axis should almost always start at zero. Does it have to start at zero? No, but if you're not starting at zero, you need to note that. You can use the zero symbol. I'm not sure exactly what that means. In general, if we show a broken line for the scale, we use a double lightning bolt. Okay, misleading graphs. Their problem with this is that um, 33.8%, you know, that's pretty close to a third. My big problem with this graph is the 3D quality. It really distorts the numbers. I don't think that's a really effective way to, to demonstrate the point they're trying to make. USA Today. In the second one, in 1997, the milk sales were 10,000. 10,000 what? We have no idea. The, the 
Y value needed to be more specific, but 10,000 of whatever it was in 2003, 20,000, same units. We don't know what the units were. Ah, cartons of milk? Oh, maybe to a, to a high school? I don't know. We need more labeling. We need more information. However, another reason that this is a bad representation of the data is that they intend for the small carton on the left to represent half of the large carton on the right. This says it's a quarter of the volume. I think it's closer to an eighth of the volume. I need to double check the, the proportions on that. But that's a significant distortion of the data. On the third one to the right, the y-axis is deceptive. Just looking at this graph, you would think, holy cow, software is so much better for learning whatever it is. But really, the percent difference is 57 to 67, maybe 10 percent. That may not even be statistically significant. They're trying to mislead us. I'm pretty well convinced that the software company did that on purpose. Thank you for your time.